Okay, so for our next two functional groups, we're looking at uh, alcohols and ethers. So in general, an alcohol is any, any carbon-based molecule that has an OH group on it. So you can actually see it here. So we have carbons and hydrogens, the oxygen is in red, and then hydrogen is in white. An ether is anything that has a carbon oxygen carbon sandwich so you have carbon oxygen and then another carbon and there could be other things going on on these carbons but this is really the um, the oxygen in between the two carbons is what designates that something it has an ether functional group okay so we're going to look at each one of these so alcohol so we've seen this already before so this r is representing really any carbon based grouping so an alcohol is when you have a hydroxyl group on uh, a carbon structure okay so where does this hydroxyl come from well it typically comes from water during a hydration uh, addition reaction okay so um, alcohol is when you have the oh group and then as i mentioned the ether is where you have an oxygen uh, carbon carbon sandwich so first, let's look at properties of alcohols. So alcohols, first of all, have hydrogen bonding present, right? We have that polar OH dipole. Um, so anytime you have an alcohol functional group on um, an organic structure, that is automatically going to make the structure polar overall, okay? So because of the hydrogen bonds, we now have higher melting and boiling points in comparison to other hydrocarbons of similar sizes. So meaning if you have, um, let's say propane with no OH group on it versus a propane with an OH group, right? The same number of carbons, um, your propane with the OH group is gonna of course have uh, different physical properties because it now has that added polarity and those added intermolecular forces. So um, we go back to also the rule that like dissolves like. So because of the polarity now in our alcohol, uh, majority of alcohols are soluble in water, right? So polar solvents um, like to dissolve with polar things, right? So if alcohol is polar, we're able to mix that in with water. Now let's go through some naming rules. Okay, so... Typically, um, when you're deciding on your parent group, your parent group should be the longest continuous hydrocarbon chain that contains the OH group as a branch. So meaning, right, you want your parent to be the longest continuous chain and the OH should be coming off somewhere on that main chain. So in this case, we will start counting closest to the side of the molecule that the OH um, is closer to. So we're going to start beginning to talk about priorities. So, so far we've looked at essentially hydrocarbon branches, right? So a methyl group, a propyl group, um, and we've looked at um, halogens. So, um, you know, a chloral branch or a bromo branch. So in this case, the OH functional group will actually take priority over most things, even double and triple bonds. <coughs> so what does that mean? That means that when we are counting on our parent to decide the number for our um, branches, we will always start counting closest to where the OH group is. So even if I have a double bond on one side, but the OH is on the other, for example, this will always be my carbon number one, okay, when I'm counting. So one, two, three. So just be mindful and aware. We're going to start looking at differences in, in uh, prioritizing functional groups. Uh, essentially, priorities lie with um, what is changing the properties of the molecule the most? So double bonds and triple bonds, for example, don't really change the properties a whole lot other than changing the reactivity, 
However, by adding in an OH functional group, that hydroxyl group, you've now changed uh, the polarity and um, the forces of attraction by quite a bit by having that there. So anyways, you start counting closest to where the OH group is. And of course, we would have to have a number for where that OH group is. And the suffix changes instead of having pentane in this case with the five, it would be pentanol. Uh, and um, of course, we would need to count and say, well, where is that uh, OH group? So it's actually on the two. So this would be two pentanol. Two pentanol, right? So if you have a benzene ring or any cyclical structure, right? So let's say I have cyclopentene and there's an OH group here and there's a methyl group here. Okay, same thing. The OH group carbon on your cyclo or your benzene ring is considered to be carbon number one. And then of course you would continue to whichever side would give you the lowest set of numbers. Okay, now, uh, before we get to that part, if you have a case where you do have a double bond, sure, why not? We'll make that a little bit longer. Okay, so let's say we have a double bond, we have a hydroxyl, um, and let's make a, let's do a methyl group as well. Okay, so we can tell that this is going to be our parent, of course. And we're going to start counting on the side closest to our OH group. Okay, so we have six carbons. So now we're actually going to come to a situation where we have two different items changing the suffix of this uh, name. So we have something that is going to be E-N-E -E for the double bond. So like hexene, let's say, for the six. But we also have an OL for the alcohol functional group. So there are several ways that are accepted for naming this type of structure. And I'm going to show you um, a, like um, the options that you really have. So the first option is instead of naming this OH group as your suffix at the end of the name, we can actually call this a hydroxyl or sometimes it's also referred to as a hydroxy uh, branch. So we can actually use this as being a branch instead of being the suffix at the end of the name. Okay, so I'll show you what it would look like in that particular case. And you would still follow alphabetical order rules. So we have methyl and we have hydroxyl. So this would be two hydroxyl or hydroxy, uh, so 2-hydroxyl, 3-methyl, and then, of course, this would be 4-hexene. Okay, so this is one accepted uh, naming for this molecule. Okay, the other way is if you have two or more things changing the suffix of your name, you can actually keep them both in there. So, for example... We would name our branch, in this case, methyl, okay? And then we would have both of our suffixes that are coming into play here. Now, the order that the suffix is placed in has to do, again, with priority. So first, we would have the 4-hexene suffix, but we also want to include the alcohol. So we would do we would then do two, two, all. So we're saying on carbon four, there is a double bond, but on carbon two, there is an alcohol. So you can include, and actually this works many ways, when you, even when you have three things that are changing the suffix, um, you would just continue adding them and making sure you have a number to indicate where it is. So um, the most important thing really to keep in mind here is you have to make sure your numbering is based on the priority functional group, in this case, your alcohol. And you also want to make sure that you are using some form that is uh, an accepted method. So you can name your OH as a branch if you have multiple things changing the ending, 
or you can include them as the suffix as well.